Take two of a video where I described the wedge product, uh, how it's used to solve a linear system, and the relation of that solution technique to Kramer's rule. The wedge product and it's introduced by the wedge symbol. You'd write the wedge product of two vectors as a wedge b, and it has a the most important property of the wedge product, which I'll, I'll define a little bit further, uh, is that if you invert the order of, of the wedge product, you toggle the sign. This is called the anti-symmetric property. So wedge product is a completely anti-symmetric operator. We're going to use that wedge product to solve a, a two-variable linear system. Uh, AX plus BY equals C where a, b, and c are vectors, and x and y are scalars, numbers. And I'll show how that solution technique is related to Kramer's rule. So, which product has a couple properties? One is that the linear or bilinear operator So, for example, if we take the wedge of a linear combination, alpha a plus beta b, where alpha and beta are numbers and a or b are vectors, we wedge this with some other vector, then we get alpha a wedge c plus beta b wedge c. I'm not going to bother drawing those arrows. Similarly, if we take A and wedge it with alpha B plus beta C, we get alpha A wedge B plus beta A wedge C, where vector, vector, So, which product is bilinear in either direction? And it's anti symmetric. And the anti symmetric is that A which B is minus B which C. If you were to define a wedge product for multiple vectors, you would say that it's anti-symmetric in any variable, number of variables. So A wedge, B wedge, C. Is the same as A wedge, C wedge, B. Or the same as B wedge, A which C, or the same, uh, oh, minus, minus, or the same as plus, and I can swap these two, B, which C, which A, which brings the sign back to positive, and so forth. So because of this total anti-symmetry, we don't have to use uh, braces anywhere, and we just write A, which B, which C. Given the anti-symmetry consequence of the wedge product definition is that it filters out any like vectors. So, so take a wedge, say, alpha a plus b
then this is alpha a wedge a plus a wedge b and because of anti-symmetry this equals minus a wedge a if we swap those a's and if something equals its negative then it must be equal to zero so we say that a wedge a equals zero for any a that's a vector I'll concentrate here on real vector spaces. So what is this wedge product? So the, geometrically, the wedge product can be interpreted as the extension of a of a vector to a higher dimension. So if we take a, a point, we can think of that as a zero dimensional space of sort. It has a magnitude, let's say three or minus three or five and so forth. Whereas a, and so three versus minus three can be thought of as an orientation. We have a, vectors which have direction and magnitude they're a one-dimensional quantity and then we're going to introduce the bivector which is an oriented plane so in this case we have an orientation a b and we call this a image of a wedge B. It's a graphical interpretation of a given wedge product. There's all sorts of different uh, equal areas that have the same orientation in space potentially. So we could call something else that has the same area and the same orientation. So if I switch here, so I can also call this quantity. A which B. And regardless of the of the shape of the area, there's certain orientation as certain uh, layout in space. So let's say that if we have some some axes here in space. This has some orientation in this space. Uh, and it has a direction, a sidedness, like a top versus bottom, similar to the direction of a vector. And that's, that's what we'll think of as a, as a wedge product here. I've used E1, E2, and E3 as uh, orthonormal unit vectors in a three-dimensional space. We can justify that geometry a bit by considering the R2 case. So R2, let's expand out A wedge B. We'll let A equal A1 E1 plus A2 E2. So E1 E2, perhaps we have A1 A2. There's our A. And we'll let B equal B1, E1, plus B2, E2. And here, our E1s and E2s are unit vectors. Uh, conventions for unit vectors vary. Some people write them with hats. Uh, some people write, uh, engineers write AX hat, AY hat, AZ hat. Uh, you'll see X hat, Y hat, 
Zihad or I, J, K, for example. Lots of different unit vector conventions are possible. I'm going to use E1, E2, E3, and so forth, with other hats or, or vector symbols over them, uh, depending on my mood. So, given these definitions, let's write out a wedge B. A wedge B, A1, E1, plus A2, E2, wedged B1, E1, plus B2, E2. And if we fully expand this out, we have A1, E1, wedge E1, plus A1 times B1, plus A2, B2, E2, wedge E2. So those are the outer, inner, and then we have two mixed terms, plus we have A1, B2, E1 wedge E2 plus E2 E1, that is A2 B1 E2 wedge E1. Style. So there's all of our terms. E1 wedge E1 is 0, E2 wedge E2 is 0, and E2 wedge E1 is minus E1 wedge E2. And we're left with A1 B2 minus A2, B1, E1, which E2. Now, if you're asking what a wedge product is, we have an answer that is, in terms of wedge product, which is perhaps uh, not much of an answer, but some additional insight is possible by recognizing that this quantity, which can also be written in determinant form, this is the area of the parallelogram, or the, it's plus or minus the area of a parallelogram, of the parallelogram in R2 spanned by E1, A1, or A and so if we have A, and B, and we form a parallelogram, then its area is given by this determinant. And since we can associate a orientation for this area in space, we can label that that uh, plane of space by the bivector. So E1, E2 describes the orientation of the plane, uh, possibly in a higher dimensional space. In this case, uh, we have a single bivector to describe this fragment of the, of the orientation. So if we go into higher dimensions, E2, E3, then each of these planes, so E1, so here is E2, oh, E1, and E2. So this here we can say is E1 wedge E2, that orientate plane. Whereas here we have E3 and minus E2. So we can describe this bivector as E3 wedge minus E2, which is the same as E2 wedge E3. 
and so forth. I can describe this in terms of E1 wedge E3. So you can think of all of the possible unit bivectors in the, in an n-dimensional space as being a basis for a uh, all of the possible wedge products in that space. So now that we have this new operator, how do we use it? So let's go and solve, see, see how we can apply the wedge product to solving a linear system. Say AX plus B Y equals C. As an equation, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So let's say we wedge this equation, both sides, with B. or we wedge both sides with A. So if we do this, we have a, a B, oops, B, Y, wedge with B, so that's the same as Y, B, wedge, B, which is zero, so that is killed. And here we have a wedged with ax, so that's x times a wedge a, which is zero, so that's killed. What we're left with is, we now have two equations, each with only x and y in them. So we have x times a wedge b equals c wedge b, and we have y times a wedge b equals a sorry that was a wedge c now if the if the uh, system has a solution, if the set of linear equations is uh, uh, can be solved for x and y, then both of these, the the uh, wedge products on each side, the bivectors, will be related to each other by some constant factor. And so we can then logically consider this to be to solve for x by dividing through by a wedge b on both sides. So if we do that, and this division can be justified by thinking of it like, so if the system has a solution, then even if we don't know what a wedge b is, um, it could be cats, for example. So we have x cats equals something. And so something must be a, a number of cats. And so we can think of dividing them out by just finding that number. So we can write out x equals 1 over a wedge b, c wedge b, and y equals 1 over a wedge b, a wedge c. Now, in general, when we're dividing through by uh, by vectors, we have to keep the order, keep track of uh, the order that we use. However, in this case, since we expect that the, presuming the system has a solution, that it's not uh, x cats equals some cats plus some dogs, then uh, these are essentially going to be compatible and we don't have to worry about order. Uh, so you could write this out. Uh, 
even further as in terms of the we had a uh, so in R2 for example in R2 we had R2 we had an expression for A wedge B and go and plug that in so x is 1 over a wedge b c wedge b over a wedge b so that is c1 c2 b1 b2 divided by a1 a2 b1 b2 and y is a wedge c oh, e1 wedge e2 and e1 wedge e2 both of those cancel out and so y is a wedge c a1 a2 or c1 c2 e1 wedge e2 divided by a1 a2 b1 b2 e1 wedge e2 Let's divide those cancel those out and we have our solutions now you notice that solving for x we have ratio of two determinants where a has been swapped for c in this first one and we have the ratio of the same two determinants where b was swapped for C. That's Kramer's rule. And so Kramer's rule, you had a linear system described by the column vectors for each of the variables, and you just swap out uh, which column in the numerator you're interested in, and that gives you your solution. Now in Kramer's rule, you had to only solve Kramer's rule was solving for n variables with uh, n vectors. This particular wedge product system is not actually uh, restricted in that way. We can see that by showing an example. Oops. So slide the board up here let's uh, go through example using R4 the R4 linear system with two variables so in R4 let's say we have a as one one zero zero i.e. e one plus e two let's say we have b as one zero zero one e one plus e four and suppose that we want to solve the linear system with respect to a solution vector C, which is 1, 2, 0, minus 1. So that is E1 plus 2E2 two minus E4. And we want to solve ax plus by equals c. I happen to know this has a solution because I constructed it myself by taking specific combinations of ax plus by. And so I should, uh, by doing the uh, working backwards, I should be able to find out uh, what the values of 
X and Y were. So we're going to need a couple wedge products. First wedge product is A wedge B. So E1 plus E2 wedged with E1 plus E4. So E1 wedge E1 is 0, E1 wedge E4. I'm going to write shorthand EIJ equals EI wedge EJ. <coughs> and that's just going to make my life a little bit easier. So E1 wedged with E4 is E1 4 E2 wedged with E1 is E2 1 and E2 wedged with E4 I'll write as E2 4 so how about swapping A for, for C C wedge B <coughs> so C was E1 plus 2E2 minus E4. I'm going to wedge that with B, E1 plus E4. And that is E1 wedge E1 is 0, E1 E4 plus 2E2 1. Plus 2e24 minus e41 minus e4 wedge e4 which is 0. So we have e14 and minus e41 and we can invert the order and which toggles the sign and add it up. Uncoincidentally, this is a multiple of A wedge B. That is 2 A wedge B. And for the last wedge product, we're going to swap B for C. So we compute A wedge C. And A was E1 plus E2. E1 plus E2 wedged with e1 plus 2e2 minus e4 which is e1 which e1 0 e1 2 e1 2 minus e1 4 plus e2 1 plus 2 e2 wedge e2 which is 0 and minus e2 wedge e4. And so e2 1 equals minus e1 2 and we have my you have plus plus e2 1 2 here kill that guy, kill the coefficient. We are left with minus E14 plus E21 and plus E24. And this should be a multiple of A wedge B. And let's see, E14 2, 1, E, 2, 4. Yes, it is. So it's minus A wedge B. So C wedge B was 2 A wedge B, and A wedge C, and C, A wedge C is minus A wedge B. So now we can write out the solution of X, which was 1 over A wedge B, of C wedge B, which was an 
and y, which is 1 over a wedge b of a wedge c, which was So this kind of justifies the division as well, because we have the same, same factor in the numerator and denominator, even if it isn't a number that we recognize as a dividable quantity. If the system didn't have a solution, then these numerator, the numerator and the denominators wouldn't be compatible. Uh, and so we'd see quickly that, that uh, you don't get a number as, the, as a result. slide the board up. So if you wanted to extend this to to uh, higher dimensions, let's say Rn three variables. So you wanted to solve Ax plus By plus C Z equals D. So you can solve for any one variable by wedging with the two other vectors. So let's say we wanted to solve for x. So we can take this whole equation, and wedge it with b, and then wedge it with c. So let's do that. We wedge this with B, and then wedge it with C. So we have a B wedge B term here, which kills that. And we have a C wedge C term here, after reordering, which kills that. We're left with X equals, oops. x times a wedge b wedge c equals d wedge b wedge c. So x equals d wedge b wedge c over a wedge b wedge c. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that uh, these wedge products can also be written as determinants in R3. So if it was R3, then this would be d1, d2, d3, b1, b2, b3, c1, c2, c3, divided by a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3, c1, c2, c3. And notice that this column has been swapped for this column in the numerator, which is exactly the Kramer's rule solution for the, for solving a three by three linear system. So that is the wedge product. That's how to solve linear systems with the wedge product. Uh, they don't have to be the same number of variables as the dimension of the underlying vectors that describe the linear system. And uh, an example of how to use that solution technique for two and three variables, and finally how to translate the, the um, wedge product into a determinant form. So in this last, in this last uh, thing, there would have been an E1 wedge, E2 wedge, E3 upstairs and downstairs, and those could have been canceled out. So that's really the more precise description of the numerator and denominator that correspond to these two pairs of wedge products. So I hope that was interesting. And uh, that's all for now. Thank you.